I like the simplicity of this rig. You can just start off with something as simple as a line and then just add a few parameters to make something completely different. By adding an oscillator, we get a bit of a nice wave. By adding an oscillator to the rotation, we get some nice sweet rotation. Bit of a time offset and we get something like this. Taking a bit of time to tweak these parameters more, the results we get vary completely. Okay, so now we're just going to go through and see what we can produce. Okay, we're just going to start off with the basic line and what we've got here is just the standard divisions and the length set to 4000. We just want this long enough so that it's not going to be seen within the frame. I've just chosen 4000. So now we're just going to jump in and we're going to choose our oscillator. Within our oscillator, I'm just going to change the minimum to negative 100, maximum 100. And I'll just leave these settings as they are. Or maybe I'll just lift up the strength just a little bit as well. And most importantly, click Use Normals. And then we hit play and we have our jaggedy line waving around. So we'll pop that into a duplicator. Change the duplicator just to linear. And from here, I can just, we can add whatever we want. Just the count, just don't go too crazy. And the size, I'm going to lift this up to 800 in this instance. We hit play, we've got a nice little animation there as well. And to get that overlapping effect, we're going to have to use the shape time offset. So we're just going to come in here, add a behavior and add a stagger. And here we can increase this to whatever we want. We'll add the index to color now, just so that we can see what's going on. So with our gradient here selected and index to color, come over to our new palette, click on the hamburger and go set gradient from palette. And there's a little issue here. So just drag the little, the last one out and delete that. Uh, otherwise it's going to end with a bit of a white gradient. And then just drag this down into our basic line, stroke color. The oscillator looked like it was going a bit too fast. So I just brought it down to 0.5. Uh, it's just a matter of preference. Now back into our duplicator, we'll add a subdivide to smooth it all out. Just leaving that on the default at three um, has quite nice results. Now back in our duplicator, we're just going to add another oscillator to the shape rotation. And we'll just lift this up to 50 and 50. And you can see that's getting a bit crazy as well. So again, we can just drop down the time scale to 0.5. I'm using the value array instead of the control center, just because it's uh, available to everyone, people on the free account as well. And then after that, I'll jump into the control center. So let's just add a value array. And then we can just add another number of values into here. And then we can use these to drive some other parameters. So I'm just going to do this really quickly just to show you what I mean. So we've got our value array here. And what we can do is we can just use the output here and say, bring it into count. And change this to 36. And then we can right click here and go rename. So here, Instead of going into our duplicator, we can just change the parameter here. The shape rotation, I'm just going to right click. Shape rotation. And name, stagger time. And I'll just link those up. So this is our stagger time. So let's pull it out here. And our shape rotation. Another way of doing it is just to bring it into here. Just put that into strength. So now we can control these and control that stagger time. Cool. So now I'll just promote a few more um, attributes and we'll see how we go. So now we can just click on this and just call it simple control. Simple control. And then if we hit control tab, 
we get a bit of a larger screen view and then we can hit alt a and it will bring in our our simple little control panel that we've made and we just hit in the background hit spacebar to play it and then we can add these parameters and have a bit of an experiment yeah what This is just a simple run through of how you could set up something like this. So just be wary and have a bit of an experiment as to what attributes and parameters that you can promote. Change a few little numbers and you can get some pretty wild um, effects. The control center is a pro feature, which is quite handy. Um, that it allows you to basically put all your most wanted um, your most wanted tools and assets in the one place. So I'm just going to go through here, select some of these and see how we go. And yeah, you can see here, there's no, there's no linking of attributes. It's all pretty straightforward. And you've also got your different compositions as well that you can run through. So if you've got a few different comps laid in, you can just jump between them and um, animate those promoted attributes. So what I've just done here is I've just turned off, or just removed the subdivide and just edit the divisions for a more of a geometric, more of a geometric effect. And this is pretty much the same one where I've just added a bevel effect on it as well. I've pre-comped my little setup and I've added a glow filter to the whole composition. Then I've created a background shape over top, which is just set to white, and I've applied the scan lines filter. And I've just changed the line count. Um, I've changed sorry, I've also changed the I've also changed it to overlay and dropped the opacity. So just uh, do do what you want with that. And I've also added a frame node to the line offset just to add a bit, bit of lift to it. And into the shadow mask as well, I've just ticked that box. And that gives you the final effects that you see there. Cool. Thanks for watching.